Hey everybody, hello, hello skis, hello, yes, you may have heard, the, and rightly so, that you are here in the ever-growingly infinite regression, my god, my god, look at this regression, I updated my video driver and it seems that we've found entirely new levels of a regressio. Turns out you can go back even further. Ooh, your your dead dog used to be like this one. Now he like, who the frick knows way back there? You're never going to find him. You ain't never going to find him. Anyway, but uh, guess what? We have an announcement. Ah ha 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 ha. It's true. Uh, weekend Type Fun, our little show that some of you, and when I say some of you, I mean exactly two of you. There are only... Two people on this planet who are not myself, uh, who actually enjoy this. And uh, to the two of you, I say, what? Anyway, <laughs> regardless. Uh, but yes, we, we are moving to a new channel because we've been acquired by the YouTube channel No Budget Comedy. Uh, apparently, they're an attempt to keep the video gaming shit on one site and the comedy shit somewhere else. Also, we wanted to be able to say words like shit and shit. Sh we wanted to be able to say words like shit and shit. There, that's how that was meant to be read. <laughs> how I was reading it before, it was like, we wanted to say shit and we wanted to take a shit. Shit was going to be had. There was going to be some shit. And it, it, it might hit the fan. It might be taken. It, it might be given. I, quite frankly, I don't give a shit, but uh, I do occasionally take one. Never give one, sometimes take one. Anyway, so if there was a give a shit, leave a shit tray, I would always, always be a taker, never be a giver. Yeah, Benjamin Franklin would be proud, but my mother would not. Anyway, regardless, regardless without regard. Um, yeah, I don't want to be judged by my students for saying shit, so I'm moving the shitty shit over to another channel while there's still time to do it. And, uh, yeah. So, students, don't go to the fucking other channel. This is some bullshit. Uh, fuck you up if you do. This is a fucking bullshit. I don't need students watching my shitty ass shit. It's mine. It's for me. Anyway, regardless. Um, so this is going to be the final episode of Weekend Type Fun that will be posted on this channel. Because this channel needs to be focused on gaming. Because that's what it was created for. And then, you know, for all of my, like, stupid only makes me laugh and, you know, <laughs> someone else out there is like, I think I get it. <laughs> like, uh, anyway, yes. Uh, so it, if there's another person in this world that has the same sense of humor I do, uh, be terrified, uh, first of all. Seek help. It's too late for me. It might not be too late for you. Anyway, regardless... So this is the, you know, disclaimer, things we need to say up top. But, oh ho 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 ho. Yes, uh, I think that this week, and I made them give me the sheet early. Let's see. Can you hear the crinkling? In the microphone, can you? I'm trying to establish that I'm holding paper. Should have been a fully artist. That's that's what that is. Anyway, I've got the sheet in front of me. We've had several applicants uh, for position of guy who reads the opening slide, and uh, we've had several people not do super well at it, except for the Shakespearean guy. Except for he uh, is uh, now performing. Hamlet in uh, ladies' lingerie, I am led to believe. I can't get tickets to that show, but boy, I'd like to see it. 
Anyway, uh, so yeah, we we've been hauling people in here trying to get them to to do this, to read the slide and to make it happen, uh, and to make us proud. And uh, you know, we we had some people. I'm not going to bore you with the details of Mr. Crankshaft who scared all of us, and uh, Flurgan Blurgan who uh, is a little too uh, Scandinavian for our taste. Um, anyway, we, we could go on and on. We could go on and we could go on. So, um, yeah. Oh, that's right. Uh, we, we, last week we had Billy Ray Joe Bob, uh, Rogers and, uh, boy, what a, what a fine job he did. Except for uh, I was not a fan of the jacket he was promising to buy. And uh, that was, as a matter of fact, the deciding factor. If you want this job, do not choose a stupid jacket if you get it. We are, we are going to pay you enough that you can afford your very own jacket. But make it a good one. You know what I'm saying? We're, we're talking denim. We're talking patches of cool bands sewn on look if you're really poor you can draw the logos of bands you like in sharpie and then put like safety pins on it and stuff but like uh with what we pay for this job we are expecting actual patches of cool bands you know anyway regardless Bands that worship Satan. Look, I didn't want to come out and say it. Well, when, you know, we have an impending Hall of Days, uh, a special Lover's Hall of Day. And, uh, yeah, I, I, I didn't want to bring up Satan. You know how he feels about love. He's not all about it, about it. Unfortunately. Because I love him. I do, with all my heart. Satan, I love you. Anyway, regardless, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we are ready to bring out another contender. Another person who uh, is going to read this for us. Uh, yeah, we're, we're going to get another one out here. Looking at the sheet. It looks like it is a certain uh, Pierre... Rouen? No, no, no. It's Pierre Rouen. It it says Pierre Rouen. No, no, no. It's uh, Pierre Rouen. Anyway, I would like to say for you this. Uh, how do you say a slide? A uh, Weekend Type Fun, Volume 36. Okay. Uh, thank you. And as no one else is clapping, I'm going to go ahead and follow suit. Um, anyway, uh, exits right over here. And uh, you will be hearing from us uh, soon. Soon, sure, yeah, soon, hearing from us. Okay, moving on, uh, with your host, Rem Pemberton of the Clemson Pembertons, come on, come on, Braxton, this is what you and the boys in the writer's room and your devil's lettuce, this is what you think is funny, huh? This is what you're getting into, some of this, this doesn't even look like me, doesn't even look like me. Oh, you think it does? Well, tell you this bit. This bit right here, huh? What's that all about? What's this one weird skinny thigh? Somebody, like, clip it awkwardly in Photoshop? That's what I'm guessing. This is Photoshop monstrosity. That's not me. But I am your host, Rem Pemberton of the Clemson Pembertons. Anyway, you don't fuck with me, Braxton. You do not fuck with me. Anyway... Come on, Rem, shake your little Cupid tushy to the theme. I said no. Fuck you, Braxton. Fuck you. Anyway, play the stupid theme. Fucking out of tuners. Get me in a bad mood. 
to start with. How good of a show you think it's going to be? Get your host in a bad fucking mood. It's going to be great. Great fucking show, Braxton. Yeah, yeah. Laugh it up. Laugh it up with your blunts and your bongs and your special type brownies and your, I don't know, wax vapes. I hear that's a thing. Anyway, I'm going to play this theme. Shut up. This has always been a theme song. This has always been a theme. This has always been a theme song. This has always been a theme. Cha. Ah, yes, the cha. The cha that makes it official. The cha that makes it real. The cha that reminds us where we all fit in this sad, lonely little universe. You hear that cha and you're like, you know what? I'm home. It's going to be all right. Now, the rest of the fucking song, I could take it or leave it. Out of tuners, you hear me? The theme song for my own goddamn show. I could take it. I could leave it. I would not be sad. Either way, I could take it or leave it. But the cha, on the other hand, I live my life by the cha. I live and die for the cha. The cha is my religion. That's right. I have several religions. First and foremost, Satan. <laughs> Just kidding. Emmy Lou Harris. First and foremost, number two, Satan. Sorry, Satan, you're always going to be my number two. You've heard Emmy Lou Harris sing, and with your lusty, lusty, satanic ball sack. That's right. Love lives in the heart. Lust lives in Satan's ball sack. It's true. Ask anybody. Ask anybody who knows anything about anything. That is factually accurate information. Anyway, Satan, with all the lust in your ball sack, I know that you have seen what Emmylou Harris looks like. Yes, back then and now and both. You're like, mm-hmm, yep, totally. And guess what? So would we. All of us, humanity, all of humankind, we would. We should be so lucky. Anyway, that's why she's the one and only true God, and that's why you're my number two. Love, love so much of your music, Satan. I mean, huh, have you heard the stuff Jesus is putting out? Cannot compete. I mean, she's Malise. Anyway, moving on. Uh, this week's episode, Valentine's is for lovers who are in love with love. Oh my god, this is going to be terrible. But we will continue none the fucking less. First things first, the story of how Valentine's Day become the most romantic of holiday in the world. I can speak, you shut up. I'm a host of a very popular show. It has ones of viewers who are not me. It's true. People who are not me have watched this. And I have been like, the fuck are you doing? And they're like, we don't know how to live our lives. We make bad choices. And I'm like, yeah, you do. That's why you're my favorites. And they're like, hooray. He said we're his favorites. And I said, man, these people got to get a fucking life. And they're like, hey, I don't know if I'm going to follow you if you keep saying the fuck word all the time. And I'm like, I'm trying a new thing. I'm just trying to be fucking honest. I feel like I'm going to drop it way more frequently, but I want to be like honest as to how I am. And obviously like I don't give a fuck <laughs> when it comes to uh things like you know, monetizing my video and whatnot, the YouTube is going to be like, he said that F word, that is, we will not give him money or anything. I don't care. I'm First of all, I will not get enough uh, subscribers 
to fucking make a difference. That's number one. Number two, I won't get enough views. And that's fine. I am shouting into the void on purpose. And if you are someone who lives in the void and you've found this, well, holy fuck, what a miraculous thing the internet can be sometimes. And if you enjoy it, like, cool, awesome. What that means is that somewhere out there is a dude that you would totally hang with if, like, you lived in similar places, but you don't because I live in the middle of fucking nowhere and you live on the other side of probably the same. Anyway, okay, let's get it going. Sorry for all the fuck bombs. Anyway, the story of St. Valentine. The man we now call St. Valentine was a clergyman in Rome during the 3rd century A.D., when Christians were being persecuted and martyred under the rule of Claudius Gothicus, the Roman emperor who is perhaps best known for having a name that sounds like a hella sweet industrial metal band. Claudius Gothicus, heavy shit your dad will hate. Oh, I will buy that shirt. I will buy that shirt times ten. God damn it, that's good. Little is known of the life of St. Valentine, but I know what you're thinking. If this guy was a Catholic priest, what the hell does he know about love? I mean, sure, he knew about the sweet, sweet, dripping man love that you have for that muscle-bound Jesus on the cross. Mm. His little loincloth just hugging his package oh so tight, it's like... Oh, Jesus, what are you doing? Hey, what's up? Anyway, anyway, sorry, what? <sighs> I promised fuck bombs. I did not promise blasphemy. I should have promised both. <laughs> because, quite frankly, I find that both are hilarious. Uh, so, yeah, let's just drive deeper into the corner of the internet where, like, ain't no one hanging out. <laughs> We're just going to put this into the void. And even people who have enjoyed it in the past are going to be like, mm, no, nope, not this. Anyway, okay, so, skip fucking back on it. Where was I? This is a very scattershot episode. Let's get back in the mindset. Hey, I'm Rem Pemberton of the Clemson Pembertons. I'm a fucking professional. The fuck do you know about being professional? Okay, that feels about right. I know what you're thinking. If this guy was a Catholic priest, what the hell does he know about love? I mean, sure, he knew about the Oh, sweet man love you have for that muscle-bound Jesus on the cross. Oh, but you probably assume he didn't know shit about dick when it comes to the kind of love you trim your fingernails for, if you know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? The kind of love you trim your fingernails for? Fingering! That's right, snitches. I'm talking about fingering your old lady so good that you have to change the sheets. But even after that, the whole room still smells like pussy for a solid week till you realize that it got on the fucking curtains. How did it get there? Well, some good-ass clipped fingernail fingering is how. I'm talking about fingering so good she won't be able to walk right when you're done. That's right. Fingering. Get into it and then wiggle that finger around <laughs> is good. She will like it and appreciate it. I mean, most of the time, ask her if she's into it. Ask. I mean, that's the gentlemanly thing to do. Or maybe you try a little, like gently, lightly, and then be like, do you enjoy this? Consent is what I'm getting after. But like, oh... That finger about to get dripped on, you know what I'm saying? Oh, man. Oh, he getting that. You do. You get the little, like, come here, like, come here, but, like, come here. Anyway, regardless, I don't want to get too adulty. You know about fingering, but, like, yeah. Uh, I digress. <laughs> I digress of what I started out sometimes talking about the story of a a long dead Catholic priest and pretty soon you're talking about fingering. I mean, who who fucking knows? Sometimes that do be like it is. 
Uh, the one story of St. Valentine that has survived tells us that he once had his faith in Jesus put to the test when Judge Asterius bet Valentine that he couldn't cure the judge's daughter of blindness. Valentine touched his hands to the girl's eye, uh, eyes, plural, and she immediately received her vision. This act caused Asterius to smash his idols and convert his entire household to Christianity whether they wanted to or not. He also released all his Christian inmates, whether they were guilty or not. What a good guy! Prior to his martyrdom, St. Valentine reportedly sent a letter to Asterius' daughter, which he signed, Your Valentine, which is the first instance of the word being used kind of like that, in a like, hey girl, what's up? But, like, people have associated St. Valentine with what they call courtly love. Courtly love is like, I love you, but I shan't be touching any of your underclothes. <laughs> like, there shall be none funny business betwixt thou and myself. We shall have an courtly love. Our love shall be courtly. There shall not be fingering or fisty fucking or butt type fucking no butt stuff at all you can't peg me you can't give me a reach around none of that shit no rusty trombones no cleveland steamships none of this nonsense anyway regardless but yeah people be like oh he sent her a letter and it's all like i have love for you but the kind of love that a man of God has, which causes him to not touch young ladies, even though their bodies quiver and yearn for the touch. No, no, we don't touch them because, you know, reasons, what not. God would be all mad if he'd be like, are you touching them sweet boobies? And I'd be like, yeah, them sweet boobies. Oh. Yeah, that's a good shit. And then God would be like, those are mine. Fuck you. Back off. You're a priest. You're supposed to be saving them boobies for me. And it's like, well, they're here now. And my hands are here now. So, like, whatever is happening. Um, so, sorry. Reasons, purposes. Um, but, yeah, people be like, uh, hey, because there's a stiff and boring formality uh, in the letter that, uh, you know, the the relationship that Valentine had with Asterius's daughter is the reason that it was he was named the patron saint of courtly love. And, of course, I myself have another interpretation, if you are prepared to hear it. Uh, if the story is true, this girl went from being blind to being able to see. Do you understand how big of a fucking deal that is? You do that for someone, you, you fucking gave them a new life. And, um, yeah, she and her family were apparently very, very grateful to Valentine. And guess what? I would be willing to bet that their love was more than just courtly. I bet she was slurping him like spaghetti and he was wearing her thighs as earmuffs, if you catch my meaning. You know what I'm saying? I bet they played a lot of not quite leapfrog, you know, where you get in leapfrog position but you don't quite make it over. You know what I'm saying? I bet he showed her a place or two where she could smuggle a kielbasa if the need arose. Do you understand? Are these euphemisms slipping past you? Like he slipped one past her, that's right. Uh, anyway, slipped one into her is what he did. Uh, in short, I'm saying that the two of them would definitely be in familiar territory if they ever got entered into a wheelbarrow contest at some Roman picnic. Yeah, that's right. He knows how to wheelbarrow this girl, and she knows how to get it going when she in that position. So, like, they a shoe in for that uh, big old tub of tater salad, this first prize at the wheelbarrow contest. Anyway, moving on. 
the first connection oh this is we're changing gears slightly because this is same valentine i didn't even mention the part where dude gets his head chopped off and whatnot yeah he was m martyred and uh you know and then miracles after you're martyred equals sign saints and it's all fairly dubious and there's a lot of stuff I'm leaving out and also a lot of controversy in the accounts that I'm not putting in because this is supposed to be fucking comedy it's not supposed to be goddamn welcome to historically accurate hour where everything is fucking historically spot on and and bereft of hilarity it's like, yeah, this is a fucking, you know, put it in, in a textbook, but don't fucking laugh at it because there ain't nothing in there to laugh at, except for maybe some, you know, kielbasa smuggling. Uh, regardless, fact is, people, St. Valentine, uh, a man named Valentine, who may or may not have been the St. Valentine, was beheaded by the Romans. Um, that is believed to be true generally i think anyway regardless uh the catholic church no longer lists saint valentine in their official list of saintly saints but some religions do who gives a fuck why am i telling you this we're just talk about how the feast of saint valentine became the valentine's day that you and i know and love why do we know and love it because it's like guaranteed sacky sack time with your beloved that's what that is is getting some guaranteed contractually obligated loves you know what i'm saying and and not just you know some fucky sucky in the boudoir but like you know telling each other that you love each other and the, like you're happy to be with each other that's the shit like I mean, it's implied if somebody lets you touch their naughty bits, but there are plenty of people who do that who don't even fucking like each other. You know what I'm saying? So it's the real shit where you actually get emotionally bare that's like for realsies. Anyway, uh, so let, let's, let's talk about how this became the day that we know and love because obviously we're not being all like, er, my lady... I would like to be courtly with you. Er, uh, yes, let's shake but our hands and never uh, shake our genitals at each other, no matter how much we want to. Anyway, I, I ain't talking about that shit. Talking about different things, other stuff. Uh, let's get into the real Valentine's Day. So, the first connection between the Feast of St. Valentine and a day for lovers was made by the British poet uh, Geoffrey Chaucer, or Geoffrey Chaucer, if you want to read it like, that says Geoffrey, uh, Chaucer. Chaucer was an absolute king of filthy, goddamned poetry. It's true. Sure. You remember Chaucer. You remember the Canterbury Tales. They made you fall asleep in English class back in the day. But that's just because your teacher didn't read any of the good ones. He's all uh, reading all the, or she, it's probably a she. I mean, I'm a he and I do it, but fuck that. Like, it's mostly she's. That's why when it's like gift basket time, it's like, who's going to win a gift basket? It's like, well, if I win it, then my wife, <laughs> because I don't need no fucking, like, uh, perfumes and scented tampons or whatever the fuck you got in there that uh, is definitely not made for a man to win, uh, to be a man in education. It's very similar to being a woman in any other field. Anyway, so yes, I can complain, and uh, who gives a fuck? Anyway, regardless, hey, hey, I'm telling you, prepare yourself, buckle up. I know I'm rambling right now. There's a lot of rambling. This is a rambly episode. If if you take this as a representation of what we do, it's pretty goddamn accurate. Anyway, regardless, hey, hey, did I introduce the white people? I'm sitting here in a room full of white people. If this is your first episode, holy fuck, you don't even know these white people. Look, I've got Braxton over here. He's on the devil's lettuce. He's smoking them jazz cigarettes. He's uh, uh, huffing on a hooner. 
That's the thing. Pretty sure. Anyway, uh, that guy is perpetually high, but not the good kind that writes good jokes. Um, over here to his left, coming around the horn, uh, is Ian. Ian is supposed to promote the show. The best he has done has gotten ads on the bottom sides of park benches, which means if you're watching this, chances are you are a crackhead or a homeless person or both. Um, and apologies, apologies that our society has failed you if you are either of those things. Anyway, regardless, uh, coming around here, we have Chaz. Uh, Chaz is my age, and he is uh, currently in a relationship with his own daughter's former best friend, uh, who is very many years his minor. Uh, so much so that if he had started dating her last year, it would have been a crime because she would have been a minor. So, uh, you know, take, uh, take big steps when you're, you know, walking around this guy. Just uh, zip past him quick as you can. You never know. He, uh, you know, uh, before too long, who knows, he might be having to go around his neighborhood and introduce himself court ordered style you know what i'm saying you know what i'm getting after I'm saying uh if he keeps taking him young then uh you know we're gonna have real matt gates situation on our hands if you know what i mean matt gates holy fuck like come on i just allow a brief political digression if you're a republican how can you fucking like allow this man anything in your party he fucked minors and it doesn't make it better that she's 17 like very quickly i'll give this to you very quickly i graduated when, when by the time i graduated from high school i was already done with girls from my hometown right I was like, I don't really want a relationship with any of you. I'm not taking it with me to college. Luckily, I wasn't dating anybody at the time. So I just went off a free agent and it was fine. I'm at college for four months, you know, from the start of the semester till uh, uh, Thanksgiving. Come home. My high school friends are like, hey, come hang out with us. You know, a bunch of guys, a bunch of girls I knew from high school. And I went and I hung out with them and I'm like, oh my God, these people are so immature. And what was the difference? Uh, w was I just being harsh? No, I had been living on my own, paying my own bills, uh, you know, paying rent on my own place, uh, taking care of all my meals, uh, getting myself up, getting myself to class, making sure I did all my homework, study, like my life was my own. And four months of that, and I couldn't hang out with people who weren't doing that yet. You know what I'm saying? So, like, it, ugh, it's a fucking creep. And I'm telling you, like, in most cases, hey, uh, people out there within the sound of my voice, if you are aware of a teenage girl who is dating a not-teenage boy who is, like, if she's like, oh, I'm done with these boys, I need a man, uh, then guess what? First of all, that man probably groomed her in the first place like a pedophile uh, to get with her. And uh, number two, number two is that he probably selling her out uh, in some sort of uh, human trafficking slash sexual exploitation thing, which, by the way, this is something that we just received training on uh, in my school district because it happens and we're being taught what to look out for. So if we see girls, and I have seen it, I know of girls at our school who have been like, oh, I'm dating this guy, he's like 37. And it's like, uh, there is no reason why that should be the case. This is fucking messed up. And, and in a lot of cases, it's guys trying to traffic these girls and make some money by literally pimping them out. Not pimping them out like, yeah, he's a pimp, but like the kind of pimp where you break a woman down until she is believes herself to be nothing and worth nothing and will do anything you ask. Yeah, that's, that's what's going on there. So 
when I see Matt Gates, a dude my fucking age, uh, getting involved with a 17 year old, what I'm not saying is like, well, she's almost an adult. No, fuck that noise. It's still creepy as fuck and illegal. So anyway, I digress briefly. Let's get back on the fucking seesaw. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, God damn, people. I'm sorry that this is so scattershot. I'm about to tell you about uh, Chaucer's uh, Canterbury Tale, The Miller's Tale. Buckle the fuck up. This one's hilarious, and it's dirty as fuck. So good. So funny. Here we go. This, like, seriously, Middle English is written in Middle English a long fuck time ago. And look at what goes down and what people thought was funny back in those days. Because it's still fucking funny now. Okay, The Miller's Tale. A carpenter named John had a beautiful wife much younger than himself, for whom many men lusted. Two such men were Nicholas, an Oxford University student, and Absalom, the parish clerk. One day, John takes a trip to town, leaving his wife home alone. Seeing an opportunity, Nicholas decides to make a move on Allison. That's how you used to spell Allison back in the day. Anyway, regardless. In Chaucer's original words, Nicholas grabs Allison by the... I'm going to try and pronounce this. It's the quainty... The quainty... Something like that. I've heard it pronounced, but it's been a minute since I've listened to the pronunciation of that word, which uh, means precious thing and is also a pun for a much ruder word that starts with a C. Because, yes, the C word, the C word, the word that you were thinking of when I say C word, you're like, well, certainly that word can't be old enough to have been around in Chaucer's time. You know, uh, they certainly weren't throwing it around in the 1200s. Yes, they were. And it meant exactly, exactly what it means now. It's just that by the time Chaucer was writing it in the 1300s, a.k.a. the 14th century, it still meant the same thing, but it was sort of like people were accepting the fact that it was really rude. And so it was falling out of favor as a term that you could just throw around. And so Chaucer used this term as a stand-in, but just know he 100% meant C-word. So, in any case, it's fun to know that our 45th president is not the first to grab someone by the pussy. When Nicholas grabs Allison, she initially resists him, but through a combination of crying and sweet talk, Nicholas persuades Allison to sleep with him. Oh my God, that's a move. You ever pull that move? Crying and sweet talk, combination of those. It's got to be like a little bit of crying and a lot of sweet talk. If it's a lot of crying and a little sweet talk, you are spending the night alone. Anyway, regardless, uh, so Nicholas persuades Allison to sleep with him. At this time, Absalom is filled with love longing, which is what it actually says. It means he's horny, uh, except actually horny meant something different back then. Uh, it had to do with cuckolds. Anyway, I could go on and on uh, because there's some crazy shit sexual practice wise for back in the day trust um and it's it's hidden in plain sight it's in shakespeare it's in chaucer it's in fucking gilgamesh you go any text that is like of a decent enough age where people weren't fucking prudish you know what i'm saying uh they all had this shit in them and you just had to know how to see it and you'd be like, oh my God, this, <laughs> these guys telling some hilarious sex jokes and hilarious sex stories like this one. Okay, let me stop getting sidetracked. Okay, so Nicholas grabs Allison by the pussy um, <laughs> when her husband is away. Uh, she, yeah, so crying and sweet talk. 
And then, um, yeah, she says, yeah, I'm going to sleep with you. And then Absalom decides he wants to have a try. And uh, he goes to Allison's window where he begins to sing love songs. And Allison sends him away empty-handed. No quainty for him because she is already fucking Nicholas by this point. Uh, Nicholas, in the meantime, is so enchanted by Allison and the fucking of Allison that he is doing. But obviously they're doing that like, let's not get caught, you know, like stealing fucks in broad daylight kind of shit. So like, you know, might be the kind of thing where like, they ain't even getting all the way naked. It's just like, you know, moving things to the side, pulling things down real quick and just, you know, trying, trying not to get caught anyway. So, and this is in there by the way, like the, the yeah, I'm giving you the abridged version. Uh, so Nicholas in the meantime, so enchanted by Allison that he wishes to spend in it. Oh, by the way. Yeah. Like, cause yeah, there's a bunch of stuff in there that I'm cutting out. But there's a part where, the, the, what I'm talking about here, that uh, Nicholas wants to spend an entire evening with Allison so that he can be with her naked, so that he can like be with her afterward and not just have to rush off, the, you know, so that he can have the experience of like really being with her. And, um, but he, yeah. And, and the funny thing is, is that in this portion of the story, in the uh, original Chaucer version of it, um, Allison is like, oh, you just can't get enough of my quainty, can you? Like, she's like, you're just addicted. Basically, she's like, you're addicted to the pussy, like, is what she's saying in terms that, like, would have meant basically exactly that to people reading it at the time right you get it anyway so uh yeah <laughs> uh so nicholas once is so enchanted by allison that he wishes to spend an entire night with her but needs a, a way to get her husband out of the way nicholas using his knowledge of astrology convinces John that a flood twice as bad as Noah's is coming, and the only way to save themselves is to tie three tubs for himself, his wife, and Nicholas to the ceiling so that they can sail safely away when the flood waters come. So, you know, upper room, ceiling, um, tubs, so that they can, yeah, make it out and, and be safe when the flood comes. No time for an ark. It, it's coming too quickly. Anyway, uh, that night, John, Allison, and Nicholas go to their separate tubs rather than their beds. As soon as John is asleep, Nicholas and Allison go downstairs to fuck in John's bed. That's right. That's how they're doing to John. Like, what did this guy do? He just had a wife much younger and more beautiful than himself. And so this is what he gets, apparently. Uh, at this same time, Absalom comes around in another attempt to get with Allison. She promises him a quick kiss out the window, but he has to close his eyes first. Absalom closes his eyes and Allison hangs her bare ass out the window and Absalom ends up kissing her asshole. Like, it says that in the text. Her actual asshole. Not on the cheek, on the fucking hole. Uh, so yeah, she must have spread them or something. Nicholas and Allison then both laugh in Absalom's face and go right back to loudly fucking each other in John's bed. Fact. This is in there. Absalom is so angry that he goes to the blacksmith where he gets a red hot piece of metal. He returns to John's house where he knocks on the window, promising Allison a gold ring if she'll kiss him. This time, Nicholas hangs his ass out the window and blasts a long, hot fart right in Absalom's face. Yes, they found farts hilarious back then. Actually, the oldest joke in the world. The oldest known joke written in an ancient Mesopotamian 
language, possibly Akkadian, who knows? Um, someone knows. I don't know. I know what the joke is, but I, it's a fart joke. The oldest joke in the world that we have that is like thousands of years old is a fart joke. Isn't that great? Does that give you hope for humanity? It's like, hey, hey, we're all right, humanity. Look at us. Anyway, <laughs> can you imagine being the translator for that joke? And you're like, okay, let's see here. This means it has been true since time immemorial that the young bride blasts a fart on her new husband's lap. <laughs> That's... That's the joke. That's It's not a great joke, but it is the first joke that anyone ever wrote down. In ancient Mesopotamia, thousands of years old, and it's a fart joke. Like, oh my God, so great. Anyway, let, let's take it back just a second. So, um, remember what happened. Uh, you know... Uh, Absalom comes around to kiss Allison. Allison's like, close your eyes. She hangs her ass out the window. He kisses her asshole. And then they both laugh at him and then go right back to loudly fucking. And he's like, oh, fuck these guys. And he, he goes to get the red hot piece of metal from the blacksmith, comes back, promises a gold ring. Nicholas hangs his bare ass out the window, blasts a long hot fart right in Absalom's face. And then Absalom takes the red hot piece of metal and brands Nicholas right on the asshole. Nicholas then begins to shout for water and qu to quench his flaming asshole. John hears the cry for water and mistakes it for the signal to sail away in the floodwaters. He cuts the rope holding up his tub and it crashes to the floor. Meanwhile, the townspeople rush over to see what the commotion is. They collectively decide that John is an idiot and they all have a good laugh at his expense. It, true. Here are the final lines of the tale transliterated for modern readers. Thus screwed was the carpenter's good wife. Yeah, by the way, screwed. Literally. Like, <laughs> it's been around. The C word's been around forever. Fuck has been around for forever. Screwed. Like, we think we invented everything yesterday. But no, humans have been human for a long time. Anyway, thus screwed was the carpenter's good wife, for all his watching and his jealousy, and Absalom has kissed her lower eye, meaning her asshole, <laughs> lower eye, and Nicholas has burned his butt painfully. This tale is done, and God save all the company. <laughs> so, like, what did everybody get? Like, uh... For all their trouble, John has been cuckolded multiple times over. Uh, Absalom, Absalom, it's Absalom. Anyway, they translated it. Anyway, Ab Absalom has like ended up kissing his uh, desired on the asshole. Nicholas singed his asshole. And, uh, yeah, they all, and Allison is, uh, everybody knows that she's a whore and, uh, everybody saw it apparently. So, <laughs> cause they would have caught her and Nicholas fucking when, anyway, regardless, they would at least found him naked regardless, moving on. So, yeah. That's what you would be reading in English class if your parents weren't such prudes and your congressmen weren't assholes. Both of those things are true. Anyway, it's just a beautiful love story when it comes right down to it, and I wish I could teach this beautiful, beautiful, touching love story. Anyway, here's how the more, and this is what we're talking about. We were talking about the Feast of St. Valentine and how it was connected with lovers. Uh, it was Chaucer, and that's a picture of Chaucer on the right, who said, For this was sent on St. Valentine's Day when every fool cometh there to choose his mate. After this line from Chaucer, we saw the first evidence of lovers exchanging handmade cards and gifts on St. Valentine's Feast Day. 
And so that's not to say that Chaucer necessarily invented it, but the first record of we of, of it that we have is in Chaucer. Anyway, the oldest known Valentine, you know, love message sent uh, on Valentine's Day as a Valentine, was sent by Charles, Duke of Orleans, uh, who was imprisoned in the Tower of London after suffering defeat at the hand of Henry V at the Battle of Agincourt, uh, the Duke and, uh, sent his valentine uh, to his second wife, Bonne of Armagnac. Uh, and here's a fun fact. that Yeah, she's his second wife. You see Charles over here. You see Bonne down here. Uh, you know... They almost look like modern hipsters, so that's good. Uh, like, hipsters are just going to keep moving backward in time. So they're like, yeah, that's right. We're, we're from Henry V's day. We got lace up to our chins. Anyway, uh, but yeah. So Charles, his first wife was Iliz Isabella of Valois who was his cousin, and she was also the recent widow of Richard II of England, which Shakespeare fucking hated every uh, king ever named Richard. He did. Like, every, uh, every King Richard in every historical Shakespearean play is a fucking doofus and an asshole. Like, those two qualities, every Shakespearean King Richard is like, D -d 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 -d, and fuck you, <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> that is accurate, that is wildly accurate portrayal. You can check on this if you want to, you want to find out whether or not this guy with his, uh, I, yeah, multiple beers, multiple bourbons, uh, and, and this is what you get the non-sober version. Regardless, I know a fact or two about Richard II of England and all Richards in uh, in Shakespearean tragedies. Anyway, uh, she was 16 years old and he was 11 when they were married and she died in childbirth three years later when she was 19 and he was 14. So... That means that Charles fucked his cousin wife when he was 13 at the oldest. Like, could you imagine if he was 11 and they were like, hey, do your duty. And he's like, all right, I, I am 11 and I will fuck a 16 year old who is also my cousin. It's some like Alabama shit. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, regardless, moving on. Uh, an even more fun fact, Bon of Armagnac, for whom the first Valentine was written, married Charles, Duke of Orleans, when he, she was 11 and he was 16, reversing the ages of his first marriage. Bon would have only been 16 when Charles was imprisoned, and Charles would have finally reached the reasonable age of 21 when he was in prison, is how he was old enough to be on the battlefield in Agincourt. Uh, anyway, uh, while much to do has been made of the first Valentine, it begins with the following four lines, which are fucking honest and <laughs> kind of amazing. I am already sick of love, my very gentle Valentine. For me, you were born too soon, and I for you was born too late. Oh, God, just bemoaning, like, hey, girl, <laughs> like, I know we married and whatnot, but, like, it's some fucked up shit right now. <laughs> and if you were older, it wouldn't be so weird, or if I was younger, but, like, girl, come on. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, the fucking royal houses of of Europe in general, just like a lot of cousin fucking and a lot of young, like really young people. Anyway, regardless, 
Uh, fast forwarding several centuries, in the 17th century, flowers became associated with St. Valentine's Day because of Charles II of Sweden. It was not nearly as fun as Charles II of England. But anyway, he created and popularized the language of flowers. And in this language, the rose became the official flower of romantic love due to its connection to Aphrodite, the Greek goddess of love. And coincidentally, if you want to see a half-decent rundown of the language of flowers, Wolverine does a, you know, fairly passable job in the movie Kate and Leopold, which, by the way, that movie is a real piece of shit. And I need to say it out loud, that movie fucking sucks, okay? If falling off a bridge and traveling in time is some bullshit, fucking hated everything about that movie because I watched it twice because I was like there's no fucking way that it was as dumb as I thought it was and that the plot line was as poorly strung together as I thought and I watched it again and I was like my god this was written by someone who like clearly is, has a diminished mental capacity that's I don't know what other conclusion you can come to anyway moving on uh in 1913 the hallmark corporation was looking for a way to move more product between christmas and mother's day which were the biggest card sending holidays at the time they began pushing the otherwise little known saint valentine's day celebrated on the traditional date of the feast of saint valentine the day on which saint valentine was fucking beheaded yeah, that's right. That's that's the feast day. Like, hey, remember St. Valentine? This is the day he got his fucking head chopped off. Let's have a feast. I don't know. Let's have some animals who had their fucking heads chopped off. <laughs> It'll be fitting. Anyway, so yeah, romance. Celebrate the romance. Uh, Madame de Monsieur. Romance is in the air, uh, for on this day, a man known as uh, Valentine had his fucking head severed from his shoulder. <laughs> and that is why we take this night for the special fucking. Where we do this shit, we... Think about all year long, but never get around to, except on the day this motherfucker had his head chopped off. Wee oui, wee oui, is a very special. <laughs> yeah, that's my Faggy McFagerton bullshit accent. You enjoy that? Was it good? Was it good for you? Because it was good for me. Anyway, regardless. Uh, so, yeah, St. Valentino's Day, um, <laughs> the idea went gangbusters, by the way, selling cards on St. Valentine's Day is a way of sending things to lovers, and, uh, so that's the reason why you have to buy your kid 300 Spongebob cards every fucking year, yeah, that's right, and if you don't, if you don't, kids are going to be like, what the fuck? I don't get anything from you, but you get this one with like a fucking Tootsie Roll attached to it or some shit. Like a candy, but like not a good candy, you know? <clears throat> anyway, moving on. In the late 1920s, Prohibition was in full swing and had given rise to organized crime the likes of which America had never seen before. On February 14th, in Chicago, Illinois, four men, two of whom were dressed as police officers, lined up seven men and mowed them down with Thompson submachine guns. Five of these men were known members of George Bugs Morin's gang. Many believe Al Capone was responsible for this event, which came to be known as the St. Valentine's Day Massacre, but Capone was known to be at his home in Florida when the shooting took place. On February 14, 1992, 
Four musicians held their first practice session in a garage in a small house in Los Angeles. Rivers Cuomo, lead singer of the outfit, would later name the band Weezer, after a nickname his father gave him. They would go on to be the greatest band in the history of dime, and I would go on to see them in concert literally more times than I can count. Their music brought love and joy to the hearts of millions, changing the meaning of St. Valentine's Day from a day when men are needlessly slaughtered and greedy corporations seek to part you from your hard-earned cash uh, to a day for love and lovers. And so it has been ever since. That's right. Through the magic of Weezer, St. Valentine's Day went from being a day where we remember needless slaughter, martyrdom, death, gangsters, prohibition, uh, that one guy burning his asshole, things like that. But now it's a day for lovers because Weezer done aligned them planets and uh, now you can, you know, get with your lady and make that a special time. You know what I'm saying? Take care of some of her needs. Listen to what she wants. Make it good. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, moving on. And now the second part. Holy fuckeroli. Can you believe how long that first part was? I can't. It was way too long. This episode is a fucking disaster. Anyway, it's all rambly, and there's a part where I get very serious about Matt Gates for no fucking reason. It's goddamn it. Oh, boy. Hey, did you hear the one about the comedy show that, like, allegedly was that? Well, it fucking wasn't. <laughs> so, don't fucking laugh. Anyway, hey, hey, um, let's read the thing. Can you believe how long that first part was? Ha, I can. Seriously, that was just one of the things we have had, have, have, had, have had, have. In this episode. Also, how historically accurate was it? With no question mark. Also, I'm proud of how much we make rain. Ram. R- r- <laughs> I know my fucking name. Back off. How much we make Rem say pussy in this episode. Hey, I'm no pussy. I'll say pussy. I don't fucking care. <laughs> how How is it that, like, I know this is like hackneyed been done kind of shit we're like hey pussies are really strong they make babies how come we use that word in a negative way that's not what i'm saying i'm saying how do we take the thing that men spend way too much time and energy trying to get like wishing that they could see one hoping that maybe they could touch one really really one to mm get inside one good and proper, you know, and and they're like, how much money do I need to spend on dates? And, you know, uh, I got to put my best foot forward and, you know, like, what do I got to do? How much time on Tinder? Like, uh, how much false sincerity and whatnot? Like, you know, guys be like busting their ass trying to get pussy. And then like, uh, and when it comes time to be like, hey, I would like to describe um, an undesirable quality, uh, th- something that I see as a negative, that I can call someone who is like, hey, you are not doing it right, good sir. You are an embarrassment to our kind, quite frankly. Uh, you know what I'm going to call you? That thing that I think about 24-7. That's right. You're a pussy. Anyway, <laughs> like it doesn't make any fucking sense. But regardless, I mean, neither does fuck you, right? Think about that for a second. That'll turn your brain to mush. Fuck you. Okay. Fucking someone. Fucking someone is like one of the best things you can do to them. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, sure, with consent and being in a loving, caring relationship in which both people are having their needs met because you've had the fucking conversations. And when I say the fucking conversations, I don't mean like, 
you know, those conversations, I'm talking about conversations about fucking. I'm not emphasizing the conversations by using the adjective fucking. I'm saying those conversations, the content of them was about fucking. You've had the fucking conversation. You've been like, hey, um, so when we fucking, um, what you want me to do? <laughs> like, you want me to go a swirly woo? A swirly woo to the left? To the left. Oh, you like it on the right. Okay, swirly woo. No, I'm taking notes. Like, shit. And, and I brought a spelunky hat. So, uh, we getting shit done this time. I mean, it's like, I brought a lunch box. Okay, I brought a lunch pail. It's them fucking green aluminum ones with a thermos strapped to the top. We get like, I got like fucking strong coffee in there. We are getting shit done. I clip my fingernails. I, I fucking like, it, we are getting over the fucking moon tonight, girl. Uh, so yeah, I forgot where I was. I got excited with my sex metaphors and uh, was excited to create a character who's like, respecting a woman and her body and getting down to it oh i was talking about fuck you yeah that's right so like you know fuck you you know what i'm saying like if you're gonna fuck your lady like that and she's like oh yeah or if you you are are a lady and you're like oh i'm a fucking do some kegels and like i'm a grab it hard you know when it's up inside i'm gonna just grip that Grip it and rip it. Here we go. Bop it and bop. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, you, you're going to treat it right and whatnot and, and make it feel extra good. You know, going out of your way to do the things that you know how to do. Anyway, like, yeah. Um, people taking care of themselves. That's good. You know, and that is when you are getting fucked. So, fuck you. Like, oh, really? You want to? Like, <laughs> oh my God, I am getting a special gift. <laughs> like, yes, I will receive your special gift. You know what? Say that next time somebody's like, hey, fuck you. Yes, I will accept your special gift. Thank you, good sir, for the special gift that you have given me. I will take it and I will care for it. I will, if I take photos of it, I will not share them with friends on the internet. No, no, no. I will keep them special for me. <laughs> like, <laughs> fuck you. I, I had never been with a man, but I am open-minded. <laughs> we will we will make this happen. Uh, oh my God. Like, someday our grandkids will talk about this. <laughs> oh God. Yeah, exactly. So, like, that's what we yell at people when we're really angry. Fuck you. You know what I'm saying? Or, like, go fuck yourself. Yeah, do it. I hear it's good for your mental health and also exercising your prostate so you can, like, still piss normally when you're old and stuff. So, like, you know, shake hands with the devil, good friend. Give yourself the old low five. You know what I'm talking about. Just get that chicken and you know, choke up on it like a baseball bat, you know, uh, other metaphors for, you know, masturbation, take care of you. I mean, God damn. <laughs> Could you imagine like, Hey, Hey, go fuck yourself. I mean, you've been stressed out all week. Uh, girl, I see you. You're working so hard and no one around here appreciates you. Go fuck yourself. Like, please, for me, look, you know I'm not into that. Like, obviously, I'm establishing a character who is into other gentlemen. Thank you very much. So I don't have any interest in seeing your business, girl, but you got to take care of your business. So please go fuck yourself. I mean, please, girl, girl, come on. Go fuck yourself. No, girl, for me. Girl, no. Please go fuck yourself. If you don't find it, I will go to your home and I will run you a, a bath 
just the temperature that's like when you get in it, it, it makes you have the goosely pimples because it's exactly like, mm. And I'm going to make sure that the, you know, that, that, that head that does the, you know, that voodoo, the, the special one that gets you right, right in the bits. You know what I'm talking about? Huh, yeah, I'm going to get that ready for you because, girl, you have been working hard. No one appreciates you. No one is, everyone around here is taking you for granted. And you know what? I would feel, I, I would feel like I was not doing my duty as a gentleman. My mama raised me. I mean, you know, my mama raised me to treat a woman with respect. So with all due respect, please, for fuck's sake, go fuck yourself, girl. I mean, right? It do be like that. That that's what it do be like. Okay. So you're proud of how much you made me say pussy. Well, good. I'ma watch this later with my wife and she gonna be like, What the fuck? Did I just break the multiverse just then? Yeah, other rem teleported in and is observing how this episode is going and he's like, Yup. You'll watch this with the wife. But me, this Rem, you know, I've got uh, Janice. I told you about her in the last episode. Uh, I Yes, we have. Uh, I don't like to kiss and tell, but um, I have kissed her from top to tail. And she does not have a tail, so I don't know why that is the expression. Maybe because uh, I kissed her on the tailbone, but I also went below that, around the horn. You know what I'm saying. Anyway, regardless, ladies, gentlemen, hey, here we go. Anyway, the second part is all about shit you can buy so your partner won't throw a shit fit on Valentine's. For the record, this is the first Google image search result for shit fit. It's a demo for an Irish punk band who only has one release from 2015 on their band camp. It's pretty good. It's their demo. So this is Shit Fit, the demo. If you like Irish, uh, kind of pop punky-ish, kind of... I mean, it's not like hardcore. It's more, you know... Anyway, uh, check it out. They're called Shit Fit. It's pretty good. Uh... The third bit, I don't know, man, probably some fucking goober-ass love story or some shit. Wait, nope, nope, what the fuck? That's not, okay, that's out of order. Okay, the second part's about shit you can buy. Obviously, whoever put these slides together, fucking Braxton. And now people have seen the things that, uh, from our gift guide, the first item. You know, Oprah does her favorite things. These are some of my favorite things, probably. I don't know. I haven't seen them. I haven't looked at the slides. Let's just go ahead and say that these are some of my very favorite things that I love to give people that I love people to have. And uh, you've ruined everything. Braxton, we need to get you off that devil's lettuce. And on some cocaine. Okay. Okay. What's this, some sort of hand-shaped candle? What's it smell like, the long pig of Papua New Guinea? <laughs> long pig. That's what the, the cannibals from Papua New Guinea, that's what they called um, human flesh. Long pig. That's what cannibals called man meat. It's gays have a different thing for what they call man meat, but um, cannibals, long pig. Maybe the gays also call it long pig. Hey, stud, let me get your long pig. Yeah, that checks out. That checks out. They probably also call it long pig. Okay, good. Good, good, good. Learning things. Moving on. Uh, what's this? Some sort of rubber elephant nose? <laughs> Looks like an elephant nose. He's like... Put it on over your actual nose. <laughs> oh, man. Is that what you types get up to in the old boudoir? Y'all pretended to be elephants while you're both naked? 
Oh, man, I knew you guys were into some weird shit, but yeesh. Oh, wait, what? Okay, what's this, some sort of leprechaun figurine with this magic sack full of golden nuggets? So you got your leprechaun, you got this magic sack down here. Uh, it's full of golden nuggets, and if I solve his riddles three, will he give his sack to me? Will he empty his sack on me and then take a sh hit the shower and take a pee? Then take a picture of me and post it on Slack for all his friends to see? Is that what would happen if I guess his three riddles? Oh, boy. I'm getting a golden shower from the sack. Oh, man. It's going to be amazing. Leprechaun. Right in the face. Anyway, here we go. What's this? Some sort of secret of Monkey Island figurine or something? Is it like purple guy brush threepwood figurine or something? Is it going to go and destroy LeChuck and then go off and fuck Elaine or something? Oh, man, that sounds awesome. The Monkey Island stuff. That's right. Wish there was some sort of something like that that existed on the internet. Was this some sort of art print of Guybrush from The Secret of Monkey Island getting head from Elaine? Is that what this is? This is what it looks like. She's like down here. She's like, hi, I'm Elaine. And he's like, I'm Guybrush. And this is my Guybrush. <laughs> Normally I use it to brush guys, but I want to find out what it's like to brush a lady because... I only brush guys because I'm on pirate ships a lot. So let's uh, brush a lady and see what that's all about. What's this? Some sort of guy who puts a picture of himself on YouTube channel, but he blurs it out so it doesn't ruin his... I don't want to seem like I enjoy this persona, which we're all... We're all... We're all... That's who wrote this, Braxton. Fuck you with your... Terrible. There's so many typos this week. Anyway, uh, um, uh, all, we are all getting a little tired of, quite frankly. Now go make me bacon, bitch. It's Friday. I'm on. It's not Friday anymore. <laughs> it is not Friday. If there is one thing that is true, it is that it is not Friday. Uh. Anyway, I am under the influence. And I wants me some good darn baconsies. Get on it, bitch. I would love it if there was another me that would get over there and make baconsies. That would be amazing. What's this? Some sort of nunchaku style martial arts weapon? Like the chain staff or the chain whip? What are these? Like chain hoops? The chain rings? It's chain links? The, the block type chains, the doge coins, the four chans, the ethereums, the eight chans, the... Oh, uh, holy shit. This is true. Okay, so I was like, four chan, eight chan. Like, I remember when those were brand new. You know what I'm saying? And they were they were basically just like Reddit with no rules. <laughs> it was like... You know, hey, you want to go to the Wild West of the Internet and just see crazy people being nutso all the time? And, yeah, you go over there and people be like, okay, you think you've seen some messed up memes before, but this is like some real shit. And you're like, oh, goddamn. Uh, making fun of Jesus Christ and 9-11? That's, wow, you were on your way good sir <laughs> like yeah it was that's what it that's the kind of shit you would find on there back in the day but then like um i went there because they've been delisted like for you can't google them like you can't get there from google google is like uh fuck you i'm not giving you that link get the fuck out um <laughs> because they're like it, it it's dangerous over there. It's true. So, like, while I was putting these slides together, it was like 4chan, 8chan. I was like, whatever became of those? And, like, holy fucking shit. I, I went and saw what 8chan turned into, and 
Holy goddamn motherfucking yeesh. I tell you what, that's where the other America... I talk about how there's two Americas now. That's fucking other America over there. Like, I don't even recognize it. The sky is purple and the birds fly in the water and the fish swim through the air. It's fucking nuts. You know what I'm saying? Like... Over there, Donald Trump's still president, and he does a good job. <laughs> it's like, wait, what the fuck? I have not known either of those two things to be true in 2021 or 2022 or any of the years after he lost his fucking election. Anyway, uh, but yeah, that if you want to see what is the home address of the other fucking America, go to 8chan, and it'll be all like... Yeah, Trump won. Fuck you and fuck your feelings. You know what I'm saying? Like, you want to know where to buy those flags? Like, you've seen them around and you're like, how are these assholes getting shit printed? Uh, yeah, apparently, the you know, like, whoever has the shit to make it happen sells it through 8chan and whatnot. Like, that's... Anyway, but yeah, when the first shots of the coming Civil War are, when they happen, guess what? On 8chan, someone's going to be like, and this is the time when we go fucking ape shit and start bullets start flying and Civil War starts for real. That will be broadcasted an hour before it happens on 8chan, so... If you are from the FBI or the CIA, the fuck are you doing listening to this when 8chan exists? Holy fuck, like this is, I'm just fucking around. You fuckers got some shit to do. Save democracy for fuck's sake. Anyway, oh, but yeah, <laughs> buy shit for your special whatever. And they won't throw a goddamn shit fit in front of the neighbors. That's what we were doing. Oh, uh, this is the part where it's a love story because I was like, third bit, probably some fucker goop and ass love story and that didn't get put together right. And so like, here it is. Here's your love story. This is be the last slides. If you're like, how long is this shit? After this, I start wrapping it up. So just prepare yourself. Hey, Dick, are you even seeing all this ass, you little bitch boy? Jane said... You like it when I throw it back like this, you bitch. Dick said, Damn, girl. Your curvy ass made me drop my goddamn ice cream, you whore. Oh, that's not ice cream. This is a dog biscuit. When I originally put this together, I I saw ice cream cone. Ah, uh, well. Fuck it. Dick said, Yeah, let me see that front shit. I'm too young to even know about that shit yet. I didn't even know what it's called. I just called it the front shit. And Jane said, get your hand off the dog and up my skirt. It's time for fingering lessons. <laughs> oh, this is a very romantic story. I should have said this is rated V for very fucking romantic. Dig said, you see this shit? We're going to smoke that shit. This that good shit. It's so good, dad lost his hate up there. Should say hat, but maybe he lost his hate too. Maybe he's like, fucking other people and immigrants and shit. And then he smoked up a little bit. And then he's like, those fucking immigrants, you know, they bring that sticky icky. And there you go. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't fucking know. Uh... Anyway, we going to smoke this shit. Then we're going to try and see what I can get you to put in your mouth. <laughs> this is a very romantic story. Dick said, come on, girl, let's try mouth stuff for the first time for either of us, right? Jane said, what? Oh, right. Yeah. I mean, probably. I, I mean, that one probably didn't count. So, yeah, totally. First time. Both of us. Yep. Never done that before. <laughs> Dick said, you see, bitch, this may have come out of me, but you're the one who made it come out, so it's your fucking mess to clean. Dick. No wonder they call you Dick. That's a dick move. Shot out of your dick. Now you're going to make her clean it up? That's fucked up. 
Dick said, Come on, let's get that sticky icky and then I'll raw dog the next one. Jane said, I better not regret this one when I'm older. <laughs> Dick said, Look, some perv gets off listening to other people. Jane said, No time to talk. I gotta clench my cooch so I can get to the bathroom so I don't stain my brand new goddamn rug. She tried not to leak on the carpet, but like, too late. And like, oh my god. <laughs> I forgot how this had been written, and this is some filthy goddamn shit. Holy fuck. Uh, this ain't getting watched with anyone. If you make it through this, you a fucking maniac. Wasn't that fucking romantic? Honestly, we can't tell. We're still a little overcome by the fact that we can swear on our new channel. <laughs> a quick check. Do the writers still understand the concept of comedy? I don't fucking know, Braxton. I don't know if you get it. Like, let's see if you understand what comedy is, and then we out. Maths. If the comedy for formulas is that tragedy plus stoppage time equals one regulation comedy match, then the generic term hate crime can be used as any time comedy because it can be applied by any hearer to any tragedy of significant enough timeitude to have matured into ha-ha fodder. You see what I'm saying? Like, I say hate crime, and your brain goes, okay, he's telling a joke about that one where it's been long enough that we can laugh about it. You know what I'm saying? Because if I say, like, this specific hate crime that took place last week, oh, we can't laugh about that yet. That's still That's still wrapped up in the fucking court's that's no, that isn't even in the fucking courts. That's like someone's writing up the paperwork to get that to the fucking courts. Anyway, so we can't use this week's hate crime. God, no. You gotta use old ones because they're hilarious. Anyway, so yeah, when I say hate crime, you just let your brain go to whichever hate crime is long enough ago that we can all have a good laugh about it, and ha 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 ha, instant hilarity. I've found the formula for instant ha ha. Instant ha ha, Rem Pemberton's down home family recipe, ha ha. Instant ha ha, just like mama made. Ha ha, that you can share with the whole fucking family. Good, down home, clean living, fucking delicious, ha ha. <laughs> anyway, regardless, so hate crime equals sign shortcut to comedy. Watch, I I'll show you what I mean. Observe, this is a hate crime of a Super Bowl spread, Kenneth. Fucking separate fruit and veggie trays, import beers and goddamn croissant on a God dang tiered serving tray. I hope the Bengals never win, Kenneth. Yeah, that's right. Fuck you and your fucking way too proper. It's supposed to be like fucking Doritos and fucking like little pigs in a blanket or some shit or Totino's pizza rolls. Well, Kristen Stewart starts a lesbian relationship with your wife in the kitchen Shit like that, Kenneth. You, you got, like, two different kinds of grapes. I didn't even know that there were that many kinds of grapes for a Super Bowl spread, Kenneth. It's a fucking hate crime. Okay, was that funny? Was that funny to any of you? Of course it was. You were all, as we say in the world of comedy, busting a gut. Guts were being busted. Doctors were being called. Ambulances were being sent. And uh, emergency surgeries for busted gut were fucking all over the Tri-County area. It was an epidemic of gut busting. So that's, that's what happened. 
You see I use hate crime of the Super Bowl spread. It's fucking hilarious. I got one more. I got one more. You want to see instant hilarity? All right, here we go. This is a hate crime of a pussy, Sharice. It looks like a forklift incident in a baloney factory. Even Georgia O'Keefe stopped before she got to this many pedals. I mean, god damn, when I pulled my finger out, I heard it clap. Like full-on applause and shit. You know what I'm saying? Sharice, your pussy is a hate crime. Hey, did we do it? Did we win comedy? Have we won the award for comedy of the second? Comedy of this right now from right now to right now. Okay, well, we're definitely not it anymore, but we were for that moment, right? <sighs> yeah, probably. I felt it. Felt good. Show's over. No closure. This program was made possible by the Igneous and Gertroldina Buttcomber Foundation and by viewers like you. Promotional considerations provided by Ralph Morgan's Extra Strangly Snakes, The Lonely Ass Librarians Guild, Grandpappy True Reel's Foul-Smelling Balms and Gruels, and The One and Only True God. This program was directed and performed by Rem Pemberton. Nobody cares if these words change or not. No, I fucking don't. I really don't. Who cares? This fucking get done. Written by Braxton White Guy. These either. Also, I did become Rastafarian. I knew it. You, you get enough of the devil's lettuce and pretty soon you're like, Ja, Rastafari. All that sort of stuff. It's uh, contagious. They like bake it into the weed. Anyway, l leave off it. D don't be such a obvious fucking moron. God damn it, Braxton. Theme song by the Out of Tuners. A presentation of non sober badger productions. Oh, yeah, that's true. And I've got school tomorrow. And it's going to be a fucking good time. Because I don't know what to fucking do if I'm hungover. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe do this on the Friday like we planned. That would have been nice. Don't you think that would have been fucking nice? You can be not sober on a Friday. Or you're going to be hungover on a Saturday. Okay, that's fine. Who gives a fuck? It's Saturday. You don't have any obligations on a Saturday. Ugh, God damn it. A subsidiary of the large, boring-sounding corporation with surprisingly questionable business practices, Lawful Asset Holdings Incorporated. A branch of the intentionally vague corporation whose purpose may never be known. The Blaine Group. And communism! Not dead yet, suckers! This week's lucky listener getaway giveaway... Chanchito Chito Piccarilli. Wait, is that the chanchi who got the munchies on his pancho and a gaucho with while well, a gaucho at his at his nachos and a panther flared his not eight? Uh, that's supposed to be eight. It was like a gaucho at his nostrils. Uh, nachos. Fuck. Try it again. <laughs> Take two. Here we go. Remember to edit this out because we definitely do edits. Because we care about the quality of the show. Here we go. Take two and clap it in. Sound like shit. Chanchito Cheeto Piccarilli. Wait, is that the chanchi who got the munchies in his poncho while a gaucho ate his nachos and a panther flared his nostrils? Because that guy was a motherfucking legend of the game. Chanchito Chico Piccarilli. Really? Same guy? Wow. For mother balls of fucking cheesy Christ. Oh my God. I bet I didn't think that I would be able to read that. But I did. I'll read it again. For mother balls of fucking cheesy Christ. I didn't near think I'd cross his path again. <laughs> I need that on a shirt. For mother balls of fucking cheesy Christ. Oh, God. 
uh, I, I'm not saying I want enough viewers to have to, not have to, but like be able to sell merch. But if I ever did, that'd be like the first shirt for mother balls of fucking cheesy Christ. <laughs> Cause like you have to, you can't, you can't say it in any other, any other voice. You can't be like, Fumada balls of fuck it. Like it doesn't, nope. It's, it's gotta be Fumada balls of fucking cheesy Christ. Oh God. All right. Our lucky winner wins a partial expense paid vacation to scenic downtown Concord, North Carolina, where you'll stay at the fabulous travel lodge and dine at the lovely cracker barrel where the real crackers eat just off the interstate within walking distance from the hotel. The end though. Get thee to fuck away. Yeah, I guess that's it. I had this whole thing where I was like, oh, I'm going to put so much extra shit on the end and it's going to be fucking hilarious. And then I didn't do it. And then I mentioned it here and that makes it even more disappointing because now you know that I have not done things that I could have done. And now we're all fucking disappointed. Just kidding. Nobody watched this to the end. Hey, hey, if you watch this to the end, please say so in the comments. I'm just curious. Like, I don't give a fuck about how many comments I get. I don't look at my stats. I don't care. Like, please, for the love of God, like, say if you watch this all the way to the end in the comments, and I'll just be fucking beside myself that anyone gave a fuck. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, I literally see this as shouting into the void, and if it's not, then that's kind of amazing in a way. Also, it's a little bit terrifying, but it's it's amazing, so whatever. All right, you motherfuckers. Uh, yeah. Saying all kinds of swear words feels about fucking right. You know what I'm saying? All this time I knew how to say the swear words, but I wasn't fucking saying them, was I? Nah, I wasn't fucking saying them. Wasn't even using my real voice. It was all some fucking, uh... Hi, this is Rem Pemberton. Some shit like that is fucking stupid. Guy sounds like a fucking moron, tell you what. But the people in the uh, booth over there, they're like, Hey, um, do the voice. And I'm like, all right, I'll do your fucking voice. <laughs> Swear to God, I'll do your motherfucking voice. I'll be like, uh, number one thing to buy your lover. Sound like a fucking, you know, guy who uh, doesn't watch football. You know what I'm saying? He gets with his friends. Who also doesn't watch football they get gay married you know what I'm saying gay married anyway regardless that's a call back to like weekend type fun episode fucking two or episode one holy fuck it might go all the way back to the beginning shit anyway people uh this has been a lot of swear words and it's time to close it on down all right people I hope you enjoyed it if you didn't well, I guess, I guess I'll go fucking kill myself. Just kidding. You, you won't hear this part. And I'm not killing myself because th th now I'm just going to keep living out of spite in your face, in your face, in your face, and in yours. That's it for this one, ladies and gentlemen. I will see you next time. Oh, okay. Bye.